I think we should take a brief moment here to appreciate life and realize how close we were to not being here. You could have very easily ended up in a Trojan or in the bathroom sink or in your mom's hair. Consider yourself lucky that your dad decided to shoot you inside of your mom. We are all here thanks to that. Hug your dad when you get a chance. Let's get straight into today's video. This one was really difficult. It was almost the equivalent of choosing between your children, but we finally narrowed it down. We're going to be talking about the top five Star Wars Jedi's of all time for this particular list we're going to stick with the main timeline which starts a little bit before episode one and a little bit after you know the ray trilogy ends we can include comic books as well as video games however like anything old republics related we'll probably have to make a separate list for i am also excluding anything that is technically considered legends or no longer canon to the star wars lore make sure to voice your opinion in the comment section go ahead and let me know what jedi i missed or which one you personally believe deserves to be on the list let's start off with number five we have obi-wan this one was a very difficult spot i almost had him falling out specifically for his representation in the obi-wan series which i did not like he was in a very vulnerable situation but that just doesn't seem the way that obi-wan would handle that circumstance it reminds me a lot of the way that luke was presented in the last jedi where he was this bitter old man and it just didn't sit right with a lot of us that were big star wars fans or are big star wars fans because we know these characters we've grown up getting very attached to them and the way that they were presented in certain shows or certain films just did not correlate with how they were initially introduced into the universe and i get that characters are supposed to develop but i just didn't love the way that they were presented later in their lives and obi-wan is a perfect example of that he just wasn't the ideal representation in the latest disney plus series however there's no denying how skilled he was with a lightsaber he was able to vanquish not only darth maul but eventually even his own padawan anakin who eventually became darth vader even though it looked like they were pretty equal in skill there are some hardcore star wars fans that still believe that obi-wan was definitely holding back in the battle of mustafar the duel went on for quite some time until eventually Obi-Wan decided to finally end it. Also not to mention the fact that he defeated General Grievous, which if you have seen not only the Clone Wars, but also the 2D Clone Wars animated series, General Grievous was portrayed as an absolute beast. And yet in the end, he was really no match for the Master Jedi Obi-Wan himself. The number four spot has to go to Luke Skywalker. As I mentioned previously, I don't really love the way that he was portrayed in The Last Jedi. However, he did have some of the most epic and insane Star Wars duels. The battle with Commander Creel is a perfect example of that. Even though Creel was slightly better at wielding a lightsaber, at the end of the day, Luke Skywalker was able to use his force push to kind of save him and buy him some time. But it ultimately served as a great opportunity for him to refine his skills and continue to hone in on his abilities. We would eventually see him take on Darth Vader, aka his father, and he was able to hold his own even though he wasn't necessarily at his peak it just goes to show how skilled he eventually became especially in the mandalorian season when he was able to just vanquish the dark troopers pretty easily even though din Djarin himself was struggling just to take out a couple of them and that's without diving really deep into the fact that he is the trainer of kylo ren and a lot of his power a lot of his abilities really were honed in under the training from luke skywalker himself the next spot on our list actually goes to a very short list jedi she decided to join the order but eventually ended up turning her back on the council primarily because she felt that the jedis had turned a little bit too violent in her eyes they were no longer peacemakers but more soldiers of the republic and if you guys are familiar with the star wars lore even though she's never made a live action film appearance she did make some really heavy appearances in the comic books as well as the animated series and then eventually made a live action series debut in the mandalorian series she is technically Darth Vader's, or I should say Anakin Skywalker's Padawan. He trained her for many years before succumbing to the dark side himself. But as I mentioned, she has a quite extensive lore regarding the animated series and the comic book series. She's had some amazing battles. For example, she was involved in some pretty epic duels 
with General Grievous and even some Inquisitors, not to mention the Inquisitor that was featured in the Jedi Tail Shorts, which she vanquished pretty easily, not to mention capturing Darth Maul and then eventually holding her own against Anakin, who now was technically Darth Vader. And then finally, she ends up having probably the most epic fight of for her life at the end of Clone Wars the Animated Series when Order 66 is finally executed and the entire clone army is set loose on the entire Jedi Order. She not only has to fight Rex, but also Jesse and her entire Ahsoka 332nd Battalion. In the last episode, she basically fought the entire squad or an entire small little army. The most important impressive thing about this was that she defeated all of them got off the ship without harming a single one of them without killing them she left them alive eventually they do meet their demise but it wasn't as she mentioned they wouldn't perish due to her or at her hands she was not only able to demonstrate how good she is with a lightsaber and what a powerful force wielder she is as well but ultimately she showcased her true compassion and how she was willing to risk her own life just to save others and i think that definitely deserves a spot on the list moving on to the number two spot we probably have the shortest character in the entire star wars universe we're talking about yoda when he finally passed away his conquests had lasted nine hundred years he was a brilliant wielder of the force and many times was able to almost predict the future a great example of this well, actually we have two great examples which is him sensing a lot of darkness a lot of anger in anakin and then the second one probably being the biggest one is the fact that he almost predicted or was able to sense order 66 as it was about to happen and you know basically ends up decapitating green your sneak skills aren't going to work on this master jedi the high republic have also shown yoda in a completely different light if you guys haven't read them they're really good reads especially the new series from disney i think they're a must read for hardcore star wars fans but obviously the biggest moment for yoda and the main reason why i decided to put him here is the fact that he actually squares up against palpatine and even though the battle for the most part ends in a draw i still think that he was able to hold his own against probably the most powerful sith lord of all time and that is considering the fact that he was at such an advanced age and would perish only a few years after after the events of Star Wars episode number three. Even though he is technically considered one of the more powerful beings in the entire Star Wars universe, I still felt like there was somebody else, somebody that kind of inched him out of the top spot because the number one Jedi for this particular list has to go to none other than Mace Windu. He was actually the character that made sure that Jango Fett would not make any more appearances after episode number two. Well, because he basically decapitates him. He is also the only Jedi to be able to defeat Darth Sidious. I know there will be those crazy conspiracy theorists out there that believe that maybe Senator Palpatine at this point was holding back maybe to bait a reaction out of Anakin, which could very well be plausible. But I think Mace Windu's fighting skill and his techniques with the lightsaber were actually a bit too much for Darth Sidious to be able to handle it. On top of that, Mace Windu was able to handle the force lightning effect that Palpatine was throwing at him. And plus the man fights with a purple lightsaber. What else do you need? this man definitely has earned the number one spot on today's list but as is always the case this is my personal opinion my personal list let me know in the comment section what your top five jedis are in the star wars lore and what your take on my list is in the comment section thank you guys for tuning in for listening to me babble on about nerd stuff stay tuned we have a lot more content coming at you guys i will see you guys in the next one thank you